Um, there was a report from Bloomberg in 27, I've got the article, of football players in Texas actually acquiring MRSA. Do you know what MRSA is, the antibiotic? From artificial turf. That's why. Excuse me, I'd like to add something to that. Sure. I actually read a study today that says no, that MRSA does not correlate with artificial turf. Okay. So I, That's I fine. disagree with what you're okay. saying. Okay. That's fine. And like I said, this was from 2007, so uh, I'm sure that data was um, more recent than that article. And this was a recent study. It was actually done in May of 2015. Okay. Um, Do you have much more? I, I like to have other folks that... Uh, just a few more. Okay. okay. Um, synthetic turf used seven days a week. Intensive sustained use of synthetic turf will reduce its overall lifespan. High traffic areas will wear out and will need replacing. So if you think you're going to be getting 10 years out of it, you may not be. Um, also, the one of the health issues is the heat island effect that uh, Jim talked about. Uh, in the study, it shows that um, the temperatures can go up to 200 degrees uh, on the turf in 98 degree weather. Um, some of the other aspects that must be considered when laying turf, your stormwater and runoff, you're basically putting down almost an asphalt parking lot. So you're going to have drainage, whereas the natural turf absorbs it. Uh, are these fields that you're putting in already have drainage? And will that drainage that you have for those be enough for the new turf? Um, we like to think of ourselves as a green community. I think everyone up here who was elected was based on the green environment that we provide here in the township. Um, natural turf is a better carbon uh, sink. It collects more carbon dioxide and turns it into oxygen. And one of the problems is that uh, a study said that for a 9,000 square meter facility over a 10 year period, uh, you would need to have 1,861 trees planted to make up for the loss of that much ground. Um, let's go through quickly. When you look at the overall lifestyle and the foot, the, the carbon footprint, you've got to look at the transportation of the synthetic turf, uh, also the end of life disposal. What are the, going to be the costs of that? Um, is it going to go into landfill? Is that material going to be toxic later on? This community has the Nike missile base that had contaminants, Gem Landsville, the um, Owings Corning that we're going to purchase, and the only things that we can use those for now are what? Uh, or at least the two, solar farms? Think of all the land that we lost for um, development or even more sports fields. And what will we do with that? Can it be recycled? What's going to be the cost? And are we going to dump that onto some other community? Um, Mr. Colacastro, yes. any more? There, there are other folks that are wishing to speak. Very shortly. Um, How much he, time do you need, Bob? I will read there the conclusion. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, the con report concludes, it is important to note that it would be simplistic to state that due to the fact that natural grass has a lower life, life cycle cost than is the best option as discussed elsewhere in this report, there are many other factors that need to be considered when determining which surface is going to best meet the needs of a particular sport or a club. For example, one of the major benefits of synthetic turf is that it can be programmed nonstop with little impact on the playing surface but influences its longevity, whereas Natural grass only has a finite capacity before the condition of the surface affects playability and in some cases player safety. All factors need to be considered when making a choice as the preferred surface and this cost should be considered when making a choice as the preferred surface and this cost modeling also dispels the myth that synthetic turf has a lower cost in the long term. As part of that study, 
the um, Australian government, Western Australian government came up with a decision-making guide for uh, whether a community should go with natural grass or synthetic turf. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have enough copies for everyone. I would like to give to the clerk. I would like at some point the clerk to distribute it to the rest of the members and look at it and use and make an informed choice when making this decision and take the time now before we go down a path that we will not be able to reverse or may end up regretting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? If you serve in the back, uh, black and white. Keep in mind there is a public hearing for the ordinance for the turf fields. This is a yes. small part of the capital. Okay. Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Chris Merkel, 50 Great Pebble Circle, Cyclopen. Welcome. Bolster Township side. So. Um, so yes, there there is a uh, separate hearing, and there's other representatives from Highland that's going to talk about that. I heard the individuals here talking about the turf fields, and just to give you five seconds of my background, I for ten years I've lived in the township since 2002. I worked for Camden County Health Department for ten years. Um, as a registered environmental health specialist that has met calls environmental <laughs> investigations uh, for for Camden County. Now I am a uh, licensed health officer in another county in the state of New Jersey. So I, I thought it was important for me to come up and, and sort of not not argue about what these gentlemen are talking about, but you can find a, uh, you can go online and find a study to, you know, to skew what you want to talk about or what position you want to take. So you can find that for any environmental issue. You know, my father was a Vietnam vet. I don't know what Agent Orange has to do with a synthetic field, to be honest with you. And it's, it's a shame what's going on in Flint, Michigan. But again, this is not Flint, Michigan. This is Gloucester Township, New Jersey. Okay, so, you know, well, I guess my point is that there's a lot of studies out there either way, but really um, I implore the council here to make an informed decision, not, you know, not a uh, ESPN article or, you know, some other articles from Australia. You have great uh, environmental experts in the state of New Jersey. You have... Uh, probably local environmental commission, you have the Camden County Health Department, you have state organizations here. So I would ask the council here to, to reach out to your, uh, you know, your local environmental experts to get um, their side of the story and see what they think. Reach out to Rutgers uh, Cooperative Extension. Reach out to that if you haven't done that already and, and then make your decision. Not, not online uh, articles or publications or, you know, ESPN, uh, you know, something on ESPN. So that's all I wanted to say. Just gather the facts, talk to the experts within the state of New Jersey, and then go from there. I mean, uh, you know, smoking. Smoking's much worse than synthetic fields. We, we have, you know, a lot of people still smoke. I mean, you know, a pack of cigarettes is probably more harmful than playing on a synthetic field. And as those gentlemen indicated, there's, there's no study right now to say that synthetic fields cause cancer. So you have to go with the information you have before you um, and reach out to uh, the experts in the, in the fields. Okay, so that was my only point. Thank, Thank you, you for much. your time. Is there anyone else? Seeing none, we'll close the uh, public hearing. Uh, is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. On the roll. Uh, on the question. Yes. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Bond order, excuse me. Next ordinance is 0-16-02. Bond ordinance authorizing various improvements to stormwater drainage uh, system in the township of Gloucester, County of Camden, appropriating the sum of $1,550,000, therefore authorizing the insurance of general obligation bonds uh, or bond anticipation notes in the amount of $1,550,000.
This is for uh, various improvements, uh, drainage improvements throughout the township uh, to pipe and head wall. Uh, anything, Mr. Lechner, just want to add to that at all? All right. And uh, we'll open for a public hearing. Seeing none, uh, entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. Second. There a second on the question. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Ordinance 0 16 03 is a bond ordinance authorizing various improvements to recreational facilities in the township of Gloucester, County of Camden, appropriating the sum of $2,110,000, I can't spit it out, therefore authorizing the issuance of general obligation bonds or bond anticipation of the township of Gloucester, County of, uh, County of Camden, New Jersey, in the aggregate principal amount of up to $2,009,523, making certain determinations and covenants and authorizing certain related actions in connection with the foregoing. Uh, this is for various improvements to recreational facilities, but not limited to the acquisition and installment of synthetic turf, uh, together with acquisition of materials and equipment for completion of all work. We will now open this to a public hearing. Is there anyone? Mr. Heinzel. Behind Ball Morning Star Court, um, I have some financial related questions to the cost of this, but almost very embarrassed to ask them after these health points that were made. Um, you heard from a couple of different speakers on the health points, one saying watch out for different studies and conclusions. Another one has said the same thing, check with experts and, and find out more about the studies and the conclusions and the risks. And all, all the speakers said that. And did, did you do those types of did you reach to Rutgers or to New Jersey DEP? I'm glad or? you asked that question. Yeah. We had a resident of our township that contacted uh, the Department of Environmental Protection and wanted to know if Green Acres money could be used to fund artificial turf. And the director, uh, Cindy Randazzo, Office of Local Government Assistant, sent an email to the mayor's office, and I'll share it with you. Uh, her comments below. There's been a lot of study on artificial turf, but nothing definitive ever came out saying it shouldn't be used. Green Acres will fund these fields until there's a clear direction that we should. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. So that was your That's investigation? The director of the Environmental Protection for New Jersey. So, so the council didn't even you're, ask these questions? You're aware. I mean, I know the outgoing president advised you that he thoroughly looked into all aspects of the health concerns. And he found nothing that would cause him concern about this ordinance. See, I, I was here when he told you that. So this council didn't reach out, even as, as every speaker suggested here, he didn't reach out to any of these state or other, organiz or other organizations outside the state or in the state. No one, I mean, this came to you. You didn't reach no, out to No, there was follow-up on that as well. Okay. Uh, and again, as the speaker who had spoke before you from Highland, you could see the pros and cons of fields. Just today, I was in the airport for three hours sitting in the airport and looking at the pro, reading the pros and cons. So yes, I, I saw MRSA, cancer related. I talked about the longevity of fields, that you're able to use the fields. It could be multi-purpose, uh, the value that it adds to a community. So I see, I, we've done the pros and cons. We've heard the back and forth. I'm listening to comments today. So if you had, any, you had anything else? Yes. Um, what went into the, the cost of these rising from an early estimate Admitted estimate, but I've, I've seen other estimates in that same range of 1.2 million to now 2.7 million for two fields. What? Well, they haven't gone out to bid yet, correct, Tom? They have not. Okay, so it's an estimate. Uh, we had floated some figures out. It's not the $10 million some individuals have, uh, no. have said. You, you brought up $10 million yourself, correct? I don't know, where would you get that number from? I didn't say $10 million. I said one. In the past. I'm not talking about, I'm talking, I'm, I'm asking a question about 1.2 million versus 2.7 million. It's an estimate. So, so the, go ahead, Tom. The, uh, the bid specs will be constructed in a way that um, there, are, there are several fields throughout the community that we're looking at that are potential for artificial turf. I believe in total there are six. 
and we've instructed the recreation engineer, John Pettit, to put out uh, two primary fields, which are the fields at, at Gloucester Community Park, the soccer field and the football field. And then we will put out as alternate bids the other four just to see what the pricing comes in at. Uh, it, is, it is conceivable that we will be able to do more than just the two fields, that we can stretch it to three fields. <coughs> and so we provided the funding to, to, to make that a possibility. So the combination of these two ordinances that we've discussed tonight um, represent the maximum amount that we estimate would be spent on the field. They do. They do, Dan. Do you understand that, Pete? It still doesn't quite explain how we went from 1.2 million to 2.7. I know it's estimates, but you more than doubled the estimate, more than doubled in between. What we've done is we've given ourselves the ability with this revenue source to do more. Okay, it's not saying we're going to, but this this represents the maximum that we can do. The question has been asked several occasions previously: what, how many fields we're talking about, and Every answer was two fields and never this, this alternative. No, that's incorrect. You said possibly three in other responses? All workshops, every meeting, we've said the same thing, Pete. I don't know why you're saying that. Because I've asked the question directly a few times. I, I don't want to debate it. This is the first I recall oh. hearing it. I guess I'm wrong. Um, this one's sort of a minor question. Um, Back in July, when this, first, this topic first came up, um, it came up because there was, a, uh, there was a bid on the agenda, uh, an agenda item to put out for bid for the design of these fields. <coughs> we, uh, that's how this first was brought up to, uh, to the public in July. <coughs> won that, that bid for the design spec. Well, it's done through our uh, pet associates, our recreational uh, professional. So they're putting the, together the design and the bids. The design, they, they, made, they made a design that was part of the bid. Well, they're putting together a, design, a bid package right. to go out. So the headed is our recreation. And they performed that, they performed that uh, back in July, or it was approved so for them to perform they've that. They've working on it, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Polidoro. Good evening again, Council Ray Polidor Ariel. Good evening. I'm speaking as a uh, former coach of Timber Creek Ice Hockey, Gloucester Township Baseball, as a roller hockey coach, as a father and a grandfather. I would like to ask Council what piece of paper, what document do you have that gives the parents of these children will be playing on this field. 100% confidence, and guarantee that what you did just now is safe for their children. What document and from whom do you have it that assures these people that their children are gonna play on a field that it's not gonna come up a puff of dust that these kids are gonna inhale? I heard Mr. Carter's voice his opinion I heard Mr. Bean Keeney voices his opinion, but what document are you in possession of? I'm giving of? you my son. My son would play on these fields. And just like all of you, I have done my research, and I feel comfortable making the decision to allow my son to continue to play on artificial fields. I feel comfortable with that decision, and I feel comfortable making that decision on behalf of others. And, and as a parent, I certainly do respect that you are making that decision on behalf of your child. There are other folks that have children that are going to be playing on those fields that may not have that same assurance. Now, Mr. Bean, have, your, have, have any of your children ever Can you speak on, up, please? Have any of your children ever played on at, uh, these types of fields? On which fields? Turf fields. Turf fields. Uh, when, have, when, my, when my boys played gardens, uh, Garden State or uh, Delval Baseball uh, over at Haverford, uh, we got the opportunity to play on what looked like. Why, why would you let them play on those fields? Well, at the time, there was not, and, and that was several years ago. What's come about, 
and the research that was done back in the, in the late 90s, what's done in, the, in 2005 and 2008, has varied. And anyone that goes on the internet sees the pros and the cons. I agree with just about everyone on that. 2015, some new things uh, have arisen. Uh, an NBC affiliate in Ohio uh, called The Investigator had gone on to do intensive investigation on that. Now, as well as that, you received that um, uh, email from Cindy Rendazzo today? Yes. And you said one of the residents made that call. Thank you, Ray. You're most welcome. Now, the reason that I thought that it would be appropriate to call and ask, I wanted the state's <coughs> Department of Environmental Protection and those who are concerned with health to, uh, to look into that. Now, I'm going to give you a quote directly from Ms. Rendazzo that basically said, she has no proof that it is hazardous. She has no proof that it's not. And the NJDEP does not have a position on it. They're doing it in various towns throughout the state. And as of now, there have been no issues with that. That is from her in my conversation with her today, because I felt it necessary to delve in a little bit deeper. And it wasn't until you heard from her as a result of my call that you had any dealings with, because that conversation has never happened in this council. Right, that's not true. Tell me when, Dan. We've had, we have had council workshops where we have discussed this. Are you the foremost authority on this? Right. Again, yes or yes or no, please. Am, am I, you know what, Ray? I wouldn't call myself the foremost authority on virtually anything. So I think that's a loaded question, okay? But had you come to the workshops and participated there, you would have heard everything from the expert, from, the, from Mr. Pettit, in his research into this. He did extensive research. Did he give you a document that these parents can see? Right. Uh, right, we can provide. What, Tom, do we still have that, that, uh, that binder? I think Glenn was referencing it with all the articles on the... Uh, I hope that Glenn got that. But, Ray, you make it seem as though we have done nothing, that we are making a, a decision tonight without any conversation as a body. And that's, that's inaccurate. It's misleading to the people who've come here tonight. No, I would di I firmly disagree with that because as I indicated, well, let's just say a 7 nothing vote, was, if everyone was comfortable with that. Right, did so we've had multiple workshop meetings. We all agreed after listening to the expert on this topic. You make it sound like it's, it's a miracle that you're going to have a 7 0. We all agreed. Had we not agreed, we may not have allowed it to get on what the What document did they leave that these parents could observe that gives them not a 100% guarantee, but some reassurance that their children later are not going to feel any ill effects of this? Mr. Uh, Kibblestis had spoke of a different type of backing to this uh, that, was, that did not promote the possibility of those hazards. I don't remember that topic coming up again, that is something other than this crushed rubber, rubber crumb, uh, has been discussed. And yet, you're borrowing twice the amount needed for this. I mean, if, if we go back, and again, remember, I'm a former soccer player when I was younger. I quit that in lieu of hockey to, to stay with hockey, but I played the game. I played indoor on the turf, and I can tell you I lost a lot of skin doing that. It's not the same game, it's a, it's a different game. The kids are more talented now than we were back then. Uh, there, there's a lot that goes on and into the game, and they put a whole lot into it. But the problem is not now, it's later. When the sun is beaming on these fields day after day, and that rubber begins to disintegrate, and that dust comes up, it's the long term. You said that Cherry Hill's done it. Washington Township's done it. Are they going to be the pilot for what will come? If it's safe, we'll find out. All goes well. If it's not, and we find out, God forbid, that anything goes on with the children playing on those fields, is it too late for our kids once they found out if they're exposed? That's how deep. And something that the parents can see, if, if something is, has long-term issues, you can't test it for a year to find out long term. Long term is still being achieved. What percent, and that's all. What percent, Ray, would convince you as a father that this would be an acceptable decision to make? 
100%? When it's your children, it's always, it's always 100%. But you know... Okay, so it's 100%. Is that your answer? Let me, let me throw a question back at you. Something you normally do with me. I would love an answer to that question. If you, what percent would satisfy you, Ray Polidoro, the father, to let your son play on those fields? Kids will be kids. That's not an answer. Kids okay. will be kids, and kids are going to get hurt. 100% is what you'd like. 100%. Is what you'd like to believe. If you if you play soccer on a dirt field, you slide tackle, you got all these things going on. On a dirt field with grass, you're going to break, you're going to cut, you're going to you know, splinter, you're, you're going to have your breaks. That's somewhat the worst case scenario, maybe even a concussion, God forbid. 90%. But if there's a possibility for an even worse, worst case scenario for this, it's worth looking into. If 9 out of 10 scientists stood at that microphone and said, it's safe, and one said no, would that be good enough? I think the fact that you had one individual here that left you no documentation leaves a question in the mind of parents. I don't have younger children that'll be on that field. I don't. So you don't have an answer to the question? 100% is Ray, what I can want. Can we like. conclude this back and forth? Do you have anything else, Mr. Paldoro? What did you, get, what did you gather from uh, Ms. Rendazzo's uh, comments? I, just re I received an email. I think the purpose of your contacting her was to make to clarify if we can use Green Acres fields, a Green Acres fund. You didn't want to go towards the funding of turf fields. No, I actually... That, I think that was the purpose. That's my opinion. I'm just giving you my opinion. Actually, her I question... I don't think it was a health concern. It's just that you wanted to make sure we couldn't use Green Acres. And until there's a clear direction um, that we can't, we'll, they'll continue to field, excuse me, fund those fields. Uh, my, my question to her was specifically health-related. Her okay. question back to me was if Green Acres money is being used, there's a more stringent set of guidelines and that they would put that under a microscope even more so for health reasons. That was her comment to me, not, my, not mine we'll to her. We'll adhere to those guidelines as we've done in the past. Is there anything else? Ray, there's some other folks that would like to speak. Yeah, if you're going to be doing this towards multiple fields and if it turns into the same as the hockey where 800,000 went to 2.9 million, and 600,000 will turn to 2.6. It wasn't 2.9 million dollars. That, that was Mr. Bean Keeney's no, response. The, uh, the bid came in at 1.9 million dollars, and the construction cost of 1 million, uh, 1 uh, 1 dollars. That was the total construction cost. Okay, and that it was... 2.9. I was repeating the response of Mr. Bean Keeney, because I, I didn't come up with those numbers. Is there anything else? No. All right, thank you very much. Is there anyone else that haven't spoken? Sir in the back. <coughs> Council, thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Greg Wiesmore. I'm the president of Highland Youth Soccer Club. Uh, I'm here to represent the thousand plus families uh, that uh, we have in Highland Youth Soccer Club. Guys, I would be the first person representing over a thousand families to stand here and tell you don't do it if it was unsafe, if I felt it was unsafe. We can go back and forth, this study, that study. I can direct you to a, a website that has a collection of studies, the synthetictherfcouncil.org for your reference, that will give you a litany of different articles published by prominent uh, doctors and, and different studies published by prominent medical facilities that will give you study after study after study showing that they don't have, they don't show any ill medical effects from crush rubber in the turf fields. I can show you, you know, that there are many studies done on the injuries with related to turf fields, and there's no correlation to increase in injuries. Football and, and other sports have been using these fields for over 40 years, and we don't see an appreciable uh, rise in, in any kind of health concerns. So I would, I, I'm just here to tell you that I wouldn't recommend this. If, if I felt it was unsafe. My kids have played on these fields since they were this big. To me, there's just as much an inherent danger 
of the kids going out, you know, Mr. Polidero, I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, but uh, brought up the issue of 100% safety. We can't be 100% sure of anything. These, these folks brought up the issue of, you know, past agents, the a Agent Orange and, and cancer-causing materials. We can't be sure of anything. The, the chemicals that we put on the pesticides that we put on grass